in sport on Trust TV, um, Adeni uh, G. Shafe. You just saw their flying eagles for their triumphant victory over there in Lome, Togo. They are back to Nigeria and they are being celebrated right now for winning back to back the Wafu B on the 20 championship that took place in Lome, Togo. They started on a bad note, uh, losing their first game, but they ended well. So that's why it's not always good to give up. And congrats to them for being able to win that competition right now, qualifying for the under 20 AFCON uh, where they will participate in. Congrats to Flying Eagles. And also during the week, we just have to touch on week review of what happened during the week three we have for you on the show this morning. That has to do with Ballon d'Or, Eric Hagstag, and also the appointment of uh, Ruben Amorim by Manchester United. Not forgetting the Flying Eagles that we just talked about. But we'll be starting with the Flying Eagles. And before, before then, we have in the studio, Mohamed Ali is here. Good to have you, Mohamed. Thank you. Good morning. Thank okay. You. So also, Wally will be joining us uh, from London. Wally Ayani will be joining us any moment. We're actually hoping that everything goes well. Right now, let's start with the Flying Eagles. As we look at the week review, Flying Eagles winning Wafu B back to back. That's the first week review that we are looking at. Flying Eagles winning Wafu B on the 20 back to back. That's a big celebration for that team. And they are being led by, uh, rather, they were led by Coach Chesbairo and Leo, who took them to Lome, Togo, and they were able to do well. Let's start from you, Ali. You look at uh, uh, the beginning, was a bit kind of sour, but uh, they picked all the pieces and they acted well. Yes, um, we didn't start the competition well. We lost the first game against Burkina Faso. Um, the boys needed to up it a bit, and they did in the second game. They won the second game against Cote d'Ivoire, and then they also played against Niger Republic. They won that game too. Uh, in this final, it wasn't an easy game. It's never easy when Nigeria plays against um, Ghana. We, we started very well. Two goals up in the first half. Um, second half, the Ghanaians came back. They got a goal in the 74th minute, and then um, towards the ending, they threw everything at us through the kitchen sink at us um, but our boys held on they held on for the win and then they, they got the win uh, with this now they've qualified for the um, nation's cup in south africa if they can finish top four in that competition they always will also qualify for the world cup for the under 20 world cup in chile good win for the boys good wins for Ni good win for nigerians also now so talking about the flying eagles uh, a moment of joy for them for the fact that uh, uh, after they won that competition, we saw the fact that a lot of Nigerians were so happy uh, looking at what is happening right now. So we know that sport always uh, brings a lot of joy. But one particular player actually stood out. That's the number 10 player there, uh, Sir Parobo Arieri. Even though he couldn't win the MVP, neither the, uh, the highest uh, top scorer of the competition, but uh, he shone like million stars. He scored a brace at the uh, final game against Ghana. I just have to watch. I remember when Victor Simeon came out, busted into the scene, and a lot of people were like, who is this? And today we've seen what Victor Simeon has actually achieved in his career. And the same thing, I just hope that uh, Parable will build on this particular uh, achievement and at least act well, play better, develop better, so that uh, in the next uh, two, three years, his name should be ringing bell. Yes, um, good one for him. Yes, he didn't win the MVP, but then again, it's not all about winning the MVP. We've seen players win the MVP and then don't go on to have great careers. Um, but this boy, I believe he's going to have a great career if he keeps the right people around him, works hard, keep working hard. I think the sky is the limit for him. Great player. When you score two goals in the final, it's never easy to score two goals in the final. So good one for him and um, good one for Nigerians too. Uh, seriously, that what you just said, now remember Chris, uh, Chris Santos Macaulay what he did and everybody was like oh this is another star mainly moved to germany with hamburg and that was it he kept coming down down and before you know it uh nowhere to be found and there we still remember rabbi ali too rabbi ali was a fantastic player yeah. that rather a very fantastic player during his uh, youthful days but uh, he moved to uh, slovakia or thereabout and he played for Tremsin, and that was all and a lot of other players, Emmanuel, yeah. I can't remember the other's name now, who also did well at the junior level. And in fact, everyone was hoping that that's another star in the making. Well, we didn't hear anything. Stanley Okoro too, a lot of them. But uh, <laughs> something must be done because right now we need to get this young lad. They really look young, the age uh, that's actually being accrued to them. So hopefully, majority of these players are expected to be able to give their best by the time they continue to grow or develop to another stage of football, hoping that uh, they will make us proud. Right now, we're looking at the week review, and we have three topics we're looking at quickly from Flying Eagles. Let's talk about Ballon d'Or 
uh, this, during the week. It was a big one because a lot of people thought the week revealed that uh, uh, Ballon d'Or would be won by Vinicius Junior, the Brazilian Balas. It went the other way. Rodri picked it. And that was a shocking moment for a lot of people who actually thought uh, Vinny Junior has got all the 100%. But you know, it's always a vote. Journalists and also the captain of all the, uh, well, from the way it is, uh, uh, the journalists decided to vote for, majority of them voted for Rodri and also Aitana for Marty winning for the women. So, Mohamed, uh, that was, it was kind of, some people believe Rodri deserved it, but majority thought, okay, it's going to be Vinny. But uh, <laughs> it went to Rodri. Oh, well, yes, um, Rodri, um, Rodri, this guy, um, in 2023, he could have won it the year City won the treble. That year, they won the, they won the Champions League, um, won the FA Cup, and also won, um, won the... Um, okay, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, so he could have won it in 2023, but he didn't win it, even though he scored the Champions League um, winning goal that, that, that season. Fast forward 12 months, this guy still churning in top performances for both um, Spain and for Man City. Um, last season, he won the league with Man City. He scored nine goals in that competition with um, eight assists as a defensive midfielder. And um, also, he, went to the, he won the Super Cup with City, also won the, um, the World Club Cup with City. Um, um, for Spain, he won the, the, the Euros for Spain. He was also named the player of the tournament in that competition. Um, I really love this guy. He's gone 74 games unbeaten. That's a record for a player. No player has gone 74 matches unbeaten. The last player to do it was Paolo Madini and Albertini in 1993. Um, he doesn't get rested for City. He doesn't get rotated for City for a reason. He becomes the first defensive midfielder ever to win this competition. I'm really happy for him. It's a good win for Man City. It's a good win for him also. And um, also, it's the first time a Premier League player has won this, won this award since 2008 and when Cristiano Ronaldo um, won it. It's also good to know that other players can win this award. It doesn't have to be only attacking players. If you have other players, defenders, um, defensive midfielders that are excelling in their positions, why can't they win it if they are doing very well? Xavi has been really, really, really consistent for the past five seasons. And I think he is really worthy with I'm really happy for him. Great win for Spain, great win for City, also great win for the Premier League also. Okay, thank you. So also I also like the, I also like the way he conducts himself on and off the pitch. This guy, he's a great role model, great role model for the kids. He's the kind of player that the kids will watch and the kids can learn from. He, he conducts himself so well. You hardly see him getting into um, troubles on and off the pitch. I think he's a great winner for, for, for the sport. Uh, it's only going to motivate other people to also do well. Uh, Madrid didn't take it well. They were not happy that their star man didn't win this one. And because of that, they didn't come for the, they didn't come for the award. Even though they won the World Club Cup, um, the World um, um, Club of the Year. They also their coach Carlos Lotti also won the Manager of the Year. But still, they decided to boycott this award when they heard Vini was not going to win it. Um, I, I really didn't like the way Majid went about it. Um, but 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 that's on them really. But Rodri Hernandez here, to me, we have a worthy winner. This guy has deserved it over the past five six season he, seasons. He has shown why he has been a part of this Man City team. If Guardiola doesn't rest you, Guardiola doesn't rotate you, it shows how important you are. To mm. play 74 games unbeaten, that's to show you how important this guy is for both Spain and, and, and also Man City. So it's a good win for him. I'm really happy for him. Well, good one for Rodri. Being able to scoop that award, uh, a big one for him. At the ahead of Vinny Junior, the Brazilian. A good one, at least uh, Rodri and uh, uh, Bumati being able to win those awards there. Well, congrats to them. Uh, that has actually gone now. But uh, there's another uh, particular uh, touch on it. We have our own Nigerian, Ademola uh, Lukman. He was uh, the star of the night. A lot of people want to, uh, is it because of the suit he wore, kind of, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it looks very elegant. And uh, uh, from the way it is, you can see that uh, at least Ademola Lukman really deserves it with that smile. He came 14 on the role of Ballon d'Or and right now uh, a big one concerning him uh, for the fact that he was able to get at uh, number 14 uh, the roll call of uh, uh, this year's Ballon d'Or. 
Yeah, great one. Great one for Nigeria. Great one for Lukman. He, he, 14th, it's not easy to finish 14th in this award. Um, I, I think he's going to win the African Player of the Year without a doubt. Here is your African Player of the Year. Um, we saw him in that final um, for Atlanta where he scored a hat trick. I think he broke one record when he scored a hat trick in that final. So it's a good one. He's been really impressive. He left Premier League to Italian football and ever since his stock has risen uh, from strength to strength. Uh, there were rumors of uh, PSG wanting to sign him during the summer. Um, that didn't go through. Um, but this guy, the sky is the limit for him. Um, this is our African footballer of the year, in my opinion. Okay, at least Ali has spoken. Let's see, maybe it will stand. But right now, let's uh, cross over the Atlantic and uh, join uh, Wali Ayeni, who is a sport journalist over there in London. At least, so uh, let's, let's run this together. Wali Ayeni, good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. Hi, everyone uh, in the studio. Okay, we are all fine here, and uh, we can see that uh, you are also doing well. Okay, before you joined us, we we're talking about a uh, week review of uh, Flying Eagles. They were able to win back to back the under 20 Wafu B, and also we joined it with Ballon d'Or, Rodri scooping the award, and also Ademola Lukman getting the number 14th position. What a week there. Let's have it from you, Wally. Of course, uh, it was, uh, a, I can say, a fantastic week for uh, the Nigerians to be able to run abroad. And uh, we could see the under uh, 20 side, you know, getting uh, to defend that title. Uh, we hope they continue that impressive run when it comes uh, to the uh, African Nations Cup. Uh, we hope uh, this uh, particular team, you know, get to play together. We want to see, you know, this team go to the World Cup. We want to see them graduate uh, to the under-23. We want to see them also coming in, into uh, the national team. We want to just see that progression because we have not been seeing that um, uh, over the years now. Uh, uh, good one, you know, uh, for uh, the lads, you know, getting to retain that particular title. To, uh, it shows that uh, they are actually not doing the work, and the coach of the side as well, you know, is uh, actually not doing the magic uh, right there. And when you look at uh, the Ballon d'Or, of course, uh, so many talking points in that particular one. Uh, most people expected, you know, Venetians Junior to win, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, Rodri won it. Uh, does he deserve it? Of course, there's a lot of argument in, in that particular one. Venetians also deserve it at some point. And when you look at even a lateral Martinez and I get to play for Inter Milan, you could actually say that he does also deserve it, you know, uh, to win the Ballon d'Or. But we also, you know, how, you know, Rodri was very instrumental in Manchester City side for Pep Guardiola in the Champions League in the Premier League. We know how, you know, how he gets to show his level of, you know, professionalism uh, when it comes uh, to the field of play. So, I would say at some point, he deserves it. He should have won it the, the, the last year when, uh, you know, uh, Manchester City won, you know, the Champions League, the Premier League and the FA Cup. But he didn't get that to see that happen. A certain message was being given the award. But uh, we get to see... Uh, what gets a pass out. Venetians has come out to say if it means for him to do it 10 times all over, he's going to do it also. And so many quarters are arguing that Lateral Martinez should be the one to you know get to win it. When you look at uh, the goal contribution he had uh, with Inter Milan, the, you know, Copa America, you know, getting to win it for Argentina at some point. So it, it shows there's a lot of you know talking points uh, in the Ballon d'Or. But where I want to actually fault uh, uh, the award is uh, where Ademola Lukman, you know, finish. Uh, Ademola Lukman should have finished in top five for me because mm. a certain player that scored uh, the first player to score hat trick in the Europa you know, final. Uh, he actually you know, was an impressive performance in the Afghan, uh, also for his club in Atlanta. Not playing badly in the league as well at some point, as it is that in top, you know, a top four in the Italian Serie A. But I feel I don't want to say if Ademola Lukman was an European player, hmm. I bet you he should have been, you know, uh, among the top five uh, at the end of you know, that particular, you know, rating of uh, the Ballon d'Or. And when you look at other, you know, uh, winners, other awardees, talking about uh, Barcelona, you know, Yamal, I wonder if he actually had a better season 
you know, than Abukayo Saka, than Kopama last season. But, you know, when it comes to football politics, we know the Spanish, you know, uh, side are very, very good. And when it comes to, you know, the sporting media, we know that uh, uh, the English side are, are, are very, very good as well. So it's all about than who wants it the most. And so many people have doubted, you know, the credibility of uh, the Ballon d'Or. But we get to see how that gets, you know, how to pass out, you know, going forward. Okay, well, yeah, Yeni, getting to wrap up that there. Well, from there, let's just quickly talk about what also happened during the week. It was a big one, though most Man United fans were waiting for it. <laughs> let's talk about uh, the sack of Veritain Hag and also the appointment of Ruben Amory back to back. <laughs> well, at least uh, it has been confirmed yesterday for Veritain Hag, so he's out of that job. So it's two in one for Manchester United during the week also. Part of the review we are doing quickly, a wrap from you, Wale. Um, of course, uh Terry Ten Hag, Harry Ten Hag, uh for him being sacked as the coach of uh, Manchester United. Of course, so many people actually saw that coming. I also saw that coming at this point, but uh, I feel Manchester United should have, you know, given him more time uh, because when you look at uh, the statistics in Manchester United, uh, after Ferguson, is the second best coach they have coached the side. You know, having played 114 games, uh, getting to win 66 uh, games, draw 17, and lose, you know, uh, 31, having win the FA Cup and the League Cup, it shows in the first season. He won, you know, to you know, trophy. But uh, as it is now, it's actually Manchester United side, which we all know they have, you know, uh, that kind of level that they should be seen at this particular, you know, point. But we didn't get to see that. We've seen them, you know, defeated by Liverpool seven year, you know, uh, Copa Hagen as a point in the Champions League, you know, in the Premier League. Uh, Bournemouth defeating them with three uh, goals to nothing. Uh, it shows that. Um, the result didn't actually you know come in his favor. But I, I want to say when things begins to fall apart uh, for Erin Ten Hag was the fallout between him and Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, uh, the outburst of Cristiano Ronaldo doing you know that you know that press uh, interview uh, with uh, Chris Morgan. Uh, ever since then he was shot out from the team you know training and he had eventually you know made a first move to Saudi Arabia. And you will agree with me that Cristiano Ronaldo is a club legend in Manchester. And uh, the likes of Gonach, uh, Ganacho and other players, we know that Cristiano Ronaldo is a legend. So things begin to fall apart for Harry Ten Hag after you know, Ronaldo gets to you know, make other move to Saudi. And uh, the players, he lost his, uh, uh, he, he lost actually his um, dressing room. Big players begin to turn against him. You saw the likes of uh, Sancho at some point. Uh, you know, we saw the likes of uh, the, uh, David, uh, um, uh, the former keeper, talking about the girl, you know. We even saw when the news that he was sacked. We saw how Sancho, the girl, you know, went on the social media platform to, you know, uh, to, you know, make some few no comments about it. So, as it is now, I know he will get a club very, very soon. And, you know, Manchester United getting to sign, you know, their new coach. Of course, it's a good coach. Uh, when you look at his uh, uh, CV at this particular point, uh, at one time when he began to coach Braga, in his uh, first 13 games, he won 10 games. Uh, that actually, you know, made uh, Sporting CP uh, to, you know, assign him. In Sporting CP in the first season, he won a, you know, a domestic double, getting him to win the league. You know, just conceding, you know, few goals and losing just two games, you know, out of uh, possible 38. He shows he's a good coach, of course, but uh, in the Premier League, is another, you know, uh, uh, ball game. You have to be at your best. As it is now, he needs to start turning the result because if he doesn't turn in the result, and trust me, uh, the Manchester United fans who I know are not uh, very, very impatient, will definitely, you know, you know, turn against them. But uh, he's a very young manager, 38, uh, 39 years old. Of course, he still has a lot to learn uh, when it comes uh, to uh, the Manchester United side. I, I feel if uh, the Canino support him, I feel he can still do a lot of, you know, good job uh, with this current, uh, you know, young 
the Manchester United side, if you agree with me, because if you look at the team, they are very young side, they have the experience in the side. So many people have predicted he's going to be playing a P4-3 in formation. We have been seeing it in spotting, you know, Lisbon, which have actually turned a huge, you know, result uh, for him. Looking at his, you know, pedigree, the Champions League, he has actually you know, considered just one goal in, in their last three games, no Champions League game. He has considered about uh, just that uh, two goals uh, in their league this season out of nine games. So he shows uh, he sets up a world solid defensive side and a world solid you know, attacking side. So you should see a lot of uh, Ruben Amore in you know in, Chan uh, in uh, Manchester United. We just want to wish him all the best and we hope that uh, Manchester United give him enough of time for him to settle down. But this particular point is where Manchester City are not sitting in the right position in the uh, Premier League. Thanks, we need to get to work as soon as possible. Okay, well, yeah, and you're giving us uh, the what it takes here yeah, concerning the sack of Eric Ten Hag and the appointment of uh, Ruben Amorim, the Portuguese uh, uh, coach now with Manchester United. Although we are not leaving behind uh, Mohamed Ali. Mohamed, I'm sure you have something to say about this briefly. Um, um, yes, um, Ten Hag, um, he, 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 uh, it's always sad uh, when people, when people, someone lo loses their job, it's not something we like, um, but then this was coming actually, um, last season he could have gotten the sack last season, um, but he won, he won the, the FA Cup and that kept him his job um, but then you could see that he was always coming into the next season he was always going to be under pressure and 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 and, and ultimately um, he got the sack 14 games into the season manchester united four games uh, four wins in uh, 14 games um, in the league they're currently 14th on the table that's not good enough they've only scored eight goals in the premier league um, they've scored only um, they've scored more than just two teams southampton and crystal palace that's really poor and also if you look at the hug he spent a lot on players over 600 million spent on players and you can't really say this is the style manchester united are playing are they playing um um, um high press are they playing counter-attacking football are they playing possession-based football we can't really say that after spending 600 million and um also you have to look at you have to look at the defeats he's he's, he's um he's had during his tenure in manu um like our man said from um from from england they lost seven nil away to liverpool at the point last season he lost 4-0 away to Crystal Palace. This season already, he's lost 3-0 um, against Liverpool at home. He also lost 3-0 um, against um, Tottenham. It could have been more that day. So the results have also not been really good. Yes, he's won the, the, the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup, but it, a team like Manchester United, um, it's still not acceptable for them to be 14th after nine games played. And uh, ultimately, um, he lost his job um, um, over the week. And they've gotten a new manager in uh, Ruben Ameron, um, good guy, just 39 years old, really young. Um, he's done very, very well in Portuguese football. But then again, it's different. It's a different ball game in England. <laughs> the stakes are really high in the Premier League. Um, let's see how he copes. Manchester United have not really replaced Ferguson since he left. They'll be hoping this guy can do the work for them. Um, hopefully for their sake, this is the guy that, <laughs> that takes them back to their glory land. Okay, hopefully that will happen. We're looking at a three-week review. We talked about the Flying Eagles, the Ballon d'Or, and also we touched on the sack of Eric Ten Hag and the appointment of Ruben Amorim as the head coach of Manchester United. Making a three-in-one to review the week. Big stories during the week, a lot of stories. You just have to pick those three for you to have an idea of what we're talking about. But right now, let's come back home and talk about this weekend. Matches will be up for graphs in the Nigerian Premier Football League. Matches to be played across Nigeria. And we look at those games all for graphs. They are big ones concerning our own league, El Kanemi. We did able to continue to play of beating, well, it hosts uh, Katsina United. Abia Warriors against Aslan. It's the Battle of the Oriental Jedi there between Abia Warriors. Imam Amapakabo against uh, Heartland. Uh, that's uh, Amuneke. Let's see what happens concerning that game. Kwara United, Aqua United. Bayelsa United, Eimba International, Enugu Rangers at home in Enugu against uh, Nasarawa United, while Rivers travel to Lagos to face Ikorodu City. Kano Pillars with Ahmed Musa and Shewa Abdullahi in their kitty, they'll be ready to see how they can do well against Plateau United. Shooting Stars away to Niger Tornados, Sunshine Stars, they'll be facing Bender Insurance 
as, as, as in fact it's going to be a tough one between the two teams there why remo stars versus should get size team lubi stars of mccordy travel to ikene to see how they will also do a match day 10 fixtures that we just have to quickly look at just uh, we pick a match from uh from my muhammad ali looking at this particular fixtures for this weekend uh well which of these matches would you pick as your match of the week um uh, the remo versus um low vista I, I like that one i think it should be a good game um remo is it like because they both are star stars <laughs> <laughs> no, not really because of that um but remo stars i like the way they play i like the football they play i saw them a lot last season i like i like how they play they've they've got very good idea of playing football and also lobby stars we know we know lobby stars and um, they're among the top teams in nigeria so yeah that, that's my star game actually that's one game i'm really looking forward to watching mm. Okay, let's cross over. Well, yeah, and you've seen the fixtures there. You can't deny that you're not in Nigeria now. <laughs> These are the fixtures of your league here back home. So as we're talking about Man United and all that, let's talk about ours too. <laughs> okay, and before you talk, nice arrangement there behind you, the Jesse, uh, Super yeah, Eagles Jesse, I get... Arsenal, all that. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you so much. Uh, uh, for me, I want to say in the Nigerian Professional Football League, uh, they have improved a lot. Uh, uh, when you look at, uh, for me, uh, the star match uh, for me will be the game uh, between Kano Taylors and Plateau United. Because mm -hmm. uh, when you look at uh, there is, uh, you know, those particular team, uh, one world experience filled with a lot of players uh, who are not going to play, you know, the league at some point. You know, Ahmed Musa coming back to Kano Pillars where he all started from, you know, Ali Rabiu, the ageless, you know, superstar, mm -hmm. you know, in Kano at this particular point for me. Uh, he's the number one legend when it comes uh, to the NPFL at this particular point. And when you look at uh, their standing, Platinum United are in fourth position, Kano Pillars are in 13th position. So, it's going to be a difficult game because uh, Kano Pillars will want to take that advantage because they are playing at home and they will want to, you know, get to, you know, win that particular game because when you look at the league table at this particular time, Kano Pillars are in 11 points in nine games and the Platinum United are in 30 points in a uh, fourth position. So, Kano Pillars will want to win to move top on the table. White Latin United also want to avoid defeat uh, to uh, uh, hit the pressure on the Aimba, River Stars, and Rivers United. Of course, that uh, is uh, for me the biggest matchup we want to see uh, in uh, this no particular weekend. All I want to watch in encounter the likes of uh, Paesa United and Aimba, of course, one game we should keep an eye on. Enugu Rangers and Nasara United. You not want to miss all the action uh, in uh, the Nigerian Premier League, and at, at this particular point, I want to say you know kudos uh, to uh, the you know uh, the Nigerian Premier League, both uh, uh, the organisers, uh, both uh, the you know club media team. They have been doing well so far. We have been seeing a lot of you know uh, match watching highlights in terms of beautiful goals being scored. We want to see more of these just for a little you know improvement there and there. And we can start you know, competing with the big snow leagues around uh, the world. Okay, good one. At least it, it, it's good to know that you have not lost touch with your own league, <laughs> despite the fact that uh, <laughs> you are with the Arsenal, the Man United of this of, world, right? Of course, of course, never. <laughs> Okay, good Very word. Bad. Yeah, we try to at least look at the MPFL match day 10 for this weekend across Nigeria. And well, yeah, then he just talked about Kano Pillars and Plateau United, why Mohamed Ali talked on Remo Stars and Lobby Stars. The two star team, they will be locking on for this weekend. Big match is coming up. And also, the real time derby between Heartland FC versus Abia Warriors, Imama Makapawo versus uh, uh, the man, Amuneke. Well, who wins this battle? All the coaches, we have uh, our own uh, Daniel Amokashi also with Lobby Stars. Not forget if you need to join with Rivers United. All our battle ready to see how they will instill their record as a Super Eagles player to the MPFL team. All this put together for this weekend. And we hope that let the best team win for the match day 10. Well, quickly, 
let's have a two in one uh, where we talk about the NBA and also the Formula One. Let me quickly take you through the, uh, those uh, two sports in moment right now. Let's start with the NBA where games we actually play earlier today, and we quickly look at the result and the top scorer of all of the teams that participated in the NBA. Quickly, let's have the result and also we look at uh, uh, the NBA results so far. Boston Celtic. Uh, they were able to do well against uh, Charlotte Hornet, 124 against uh, Charlotte Hornet, score 109. Jason Tatum scored 32 points, 11 rebounds, and three steals he had. White Ball actually had 31 points there. Orlando Magic, they lost against Cleveland Cavalier over there in Ohio, 109 to 120. As Sorg got 28 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists. Uh, Garland, 25 points, he scored for Cleveland Cavaliers. So you can't take anything away from the New York uh, Knicks. They actually did well against Detroit Pistons as they fought hard to win that game, but they were eventually triumphant there. Bronson at the six point, Cunningham getting 22 points, six rebounds, and six assists uh, in that game there. Still giving you results of the NBA earlier played. And now let's look at the other results so far in the NBA where we have Sacramento Kings. They did well. They played 123 to defeat Atlanta Hawks. Actually scored 115. Fox at one point he scored seven rebounds and four steal. While Young also had 25 points, 12 assists. Chicago Bulls, they played 112. Why they lost against Brooklyn Nets of New York in that game with extra eight points, where Vucevic had 28 points, 11 rebounds, and Thomas also scored for his team 32 points there. Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, their star man, Anthony Davis, alongside LeBron James, also were able to go well. They actually did well. Well, LeBron James, rather, Anthony Davis had 38 points, 11 rebounds, and 3 still he had. While Barrett scored 33 points, 12 assists there. While Los Angeles Lakers, they won that game 131 to 125 to defeat Toronto Raptors of Canada in those encounters that has to do, be with, uh, that do with uh, NBA. They are the result of games uh, actually play earlier today for those that love basketball that's just a wrap from the nba for you to see what's happening there like an update also let's talk about formula one the car race a lot of people love formula one alone the sound alone can make you so uh, glued to your tv but right now let's look at the standing because we know that this weekend the brazilian grand prix is coming over there in brazil and all the drivers are back to ready but the standing so far for the top seven for the driver, you have Max Verstappen. Uh, you can't take anything from the uh, Dutch uh, racer of uh, Red Bull with seven wins over so this season, having 362 points. Lando Norris from Great Britain, McLaren, he has won three races and he had 315 points. Charles Leclerc from Monaco, Ferrari, that's the driver of Ferrari. Also, he has won three races so far and he scored 291 in those races. And you have Oscar Piastri from Australia, McLaren, that's his team, and 251, he has won two races now. Carlos Zayns, of, uh, that's Carlos Zayns Jr. from Spain, he races for Ferrari, he has won two races this season, 240. Luis Amiti, you look at him, the great that should be added to his name. Well, he races for Mercedes, alongside George Russell, also Mercedes, they both won three races, two, four, Hamilton and one for Russell, 189 points and 177 points. For Lewis Hamilton, he has really had his time when it comes to Formula 1. He has done what he at least he could do. He has done everything. But it's time for Verstappen and Lee Clark for the fact that they are really doing well. And Lando Norris too. So to let you have a feel of what is happening there, why the race for this weekend Brazilian Grand Prix that will be coming up. Although for the pole position, Oscar Piatri of McLaren actually uh, is at number one in the pole position for the Brazilian week, uh, uh, Grand Prix for this weekend. And let's see what happens by the time that race comes up on Sunday. Well, more will be coming your way next weekend. We just continue to give you more updates in one of other sports, not just football alone. We just touch on NBA and also Formula One. Now, let's go back to football and look at the big matches for this weekend. We are focusing on two matches. Newcastle United against Arsenal and Manchester United versus Chelsea, especially Man United versus Chelsea. That's a big match that is actually coming up for this weekend. Real Man United fans are already hiding. <laughs> uh, the fear of uh, Enzo Maresca, Enzo Fernandez, all these players. Not forgetting Cole Palmer uh, is the, uh, actually 
the fear of wisdom right now. Well, my United Chelsea. Well, yeah, any quickly. Uh, just uh, let's start with that one. Uh, focus on Manchester United versus Chelsea. Quickly from you before we turn to Mohamed Ali. Oh, it's going to be a mouth watching encounter uh, because at this particular game, uh, we saw what happened at the Stamford Bridge last season where Chelsea came back from the dead you know, to beat uh, uh, Manchester United. But it's going to be another uh, ball game at this particular point. Uh, Chelsea, make no doubt about it. Uh, Manchester United, you know, coming from the back heel of uh, sacking Eric Ten Hag. We know that. Uh, Van Nistero will still be the one to lead this side against uh, uh, Manchester United. Um, uh, Manchester United going into this particular game with a win. Uh, let's start you know, the cup. Chelsea going into this particular game with a lose uh, over, you know, uh, uh, a lose against uh, Newcastle. Uh, so it, it shows that uh, uh, the game is going to be for anybody who wants it the most. Uh, despite the fact that um, Manchester United are playing at two, but uh, with the kind of setup, you know, the Chelsea are having in the Premier League now, uh, you should definitely get to see Chelsea taking a point at the end of this particular game for me. So I want to say, in my end, in a 2 2 draw, because Manchester United will not want to be, and Chelsea, you know, looking at the four, five form they are finding themselves in the Premier League now, also will not want to drop points and is a heavyweight clutch. So, I feel uh, the game to end in a draw. And uh, when you look at the game between Arsenal and uh, you right there, St. James Park, it's going to be a mouth watching encounter because Arsenal did on a revenge mission. But despite the fact that uh, a lot of players are out and due to injury, you know, the likes of um, Gabriel Magalhães, uh, Martin Odegaard, got so many, you know, are key players for us now and doubtful for that particular game. But uh, it should be a match watching it. Uh, Newcastle, after getting to beat Chelsea in the League Cup, of course, they will be beaming with confidence, you no know, going in particular game. But us now knows that uh, a you know, loss in that particular game will definitely uh, affect, you know, that title campaign when, uh, when they are still at this particular point, uh, where they are, 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 are like five points away from uh, the Liverpool. So uh, it's going to be a match watching encounter. Ateta just not uh, just need to bring his still you know the confidence uh, in this particular side. And I hope to see us now you know, getting to win this particular game. I'll be biased you know, at this particular point. <laughs> I understand why we are biased. At least behind you is an Arsenal uh, uh, Jesse there. So everybody will know you're a gunner, right? <laughs> I just hope that <laughs> Newcastle can turn things around against you. A big one there. Okay, let's turn to Mohamed Ali now. Uh, Mohamed, it's your own turn. You look at this big we one. Hope to see uh, how he gets uh, the that. Okay, good one. Uh, at least, uh, well, my United Chelsea, Newcastle, Arsenal, but our focus is on my United Chelsea. Ali, let's have you. Um, th this should be a great game. I mean, the, the Premier League has been giving us for the past three weeks. Last um, two weeks ago, we had Chelsea, Chelsea, Liverpool. Last week, we had Liverpool, Arsenal. This week, Chelsea, uh, Man U. Back to back big games. Mm -hmm. um, this one, um, Ruud van Nistelrooy. He's in as the interim manager, I think, till after the um, international break. He has Manchester United DNA. He played under Alex Ferguson. Uh, Manchester United want to attack. The fans will be screaming, attack, attack attack and he's going to give them that he did that in his first game in charge against Leicester City in the Carabao Cup they scored five goals in that game and they had 20 25 um, attempts um, in that game so you can tell that he's going to attack against Chelsea and this Chelsea team from their own perspective they probably wouldn't have wanted their hug to go yet they would have wanted to play against their hug now against Van Nistelrooy they don't really have an idea what to expect um, but but one thing is for sure um, United is going to attack attack. Chelsea, very young team. I think they're one of the youngest teams in the league and also um, the second highest goal scorers in the league just behind Manchester City. They scored 19 goals already. Um, also very suspectable at the back. So there, there are going to be lots of chances in this one. United will come attacking. Chelsea will attack. Both defenses suspectable. So there should be goals in this one. Chelsea have on their own hand also. 
they don't have a good record against Manchester United in Old Trafford. The last time Chelsea won in Old Trafford in the league was May 2013. Um, we would have to wait and see if these young players can change that. Um, but yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I'm beginning to suspect that you're a United fan. The way you, <laughs> <laughs> the way you are going about it. Oh, that's what I tell you. was the last time they won at Old Trafford. I'm looking at that record. It's suspicious. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a very bad record Chelsea have in Old Trafford, um, to be honest. And let's not forget, sometimes there's always this manager, new manager bounce. Um, Ruth Venistera is, take, is taking over for, for a few games. The players would want to, they would want him. to impress him. And that might not really um, come out well for Chelsea. Um, but yes, Chelsea... Good run of form, um, like he said earlier. Um, they might just win this one, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, while well, we are looking at, uh, well, the man on the screen there, Van Nistroy, legend of Manchester United. He will be at the dugout for Manchester United versus Chelsea. Uh, big match coming up uh, for this weekend. Uh, really back-to-back -back big matches. And uh, both of them have spoken, both Wale and Mohamed, about this expectation about, uh, concerning these games. And uh, really a tough one there. Now, uh, if you are to look at... Uh, uh, if you have to guess the scoreline now, where would it be? Uh, I'm talking about uh, Mohamed Ali now. Um, I expect goals, to be honest. So maybe, maybe, maybe 3 1, maybe 3 2. 3 2, I'll go with 3 2. Chelsea win. Mm. I think they will finally break that, um, that, that, that 11 year um, on, 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 uh, without a win in Old Trafford. I think Chelsea will win this one. Yeah. Chelsea 3 2. Uh, would you agree with that? Uh, while he say Chelsea, they are going to win 3-2 at Old Trafford. I'm sure as an Arsenal fan, who doesn't want to wish uh, Chelsea well? <laughs> you would not want to agree, right? Of course, uh, this game for me, I see a draw because uh, mm. despite the fact that Manchester United are not in the best form, but this is a big game uh, for both teams. Uh, Bragging rights will definitely be on the table. So uh, I want to say this particular game will end in a 2-2 two -two draw. 2-2 mm. two -two draw. And who is going to be do the magic for you? Because I know a lot of people will be looking at Kopama and Derebao. Uh, who are you looking at as the magic for Chelsea and also for Manchester United? It has to be Kopama because uh, his confidence is another level when you look at you know Chelsea at this particular point, and uh, Jackson of course he do come to the party you know, and uh, don't forget the likes of um, Garnacho for Manchester United you know he's been one of that you know you know live wire in that particular team of course uh, Bruno on a on a very good day is a star player he can make things he can make things happen Highland also of course uh, he just want those passes for him to put you know those who are at the back of the net so uh, there's a lot of players who actually know watch out for in this particular game Kupama, Jackson, Garnacho and Bruno for me you should have to know what are those are the players that could actually do magic you know for both Manchester United and Chelsea okay well you actually done your own part uh, Mohamed Ali you look at it uh, magic man of the moment Cole Palmer is the man that everybody is looking up to in fact Enzo Maresca has to admit that yes with the way he plays football everyone around the team wants to have him so do you agree with that that it's going to be the magic man for the Blues um, yes, uh, I mean, it, it's hard to look uh, beyond Cole Palmer. It has to be him. Um, since he's moved to Chelsea, he has been, he has been really um, awesome. Um, he won the England Player of the Year. Um, he also had a very good Euros, although he didn't start the games. But coming on from the bench, he would do very well. And for Chelsea, he has been sensational. Um, he's made um, Chelsea um, almost forget about Eden Hazard. So yes, he should be. He should, he should have a great game today. But I'm looking at Nicholas Jackson, um, very under rated um, but he puts in good work um, his goals are impressive numbers are impressive no penalties he doesn't play penalties um, but then he tends to um, score goals um, assist also and also his work rates on and off the ball I like the way he holds up the play I like the way he links with the with the midfield the way he holds the ball and then plays um, other players in so Nicola Jackson um, should be should have a good game um, and also Cole Palmer yeah mm -hmm. those two guys should be the star players for Chelsea okay we've been
been able to run through the big matches coming up for this weekend. Newcastle, Arsenal, Manchester United, Chelsea. And also we run through MPFL for all the big matches coming up in our own league as we talk about the week, uh, week review of activities that has to do with uh, uh, Ballon d'Or, Flying Eagles, and also uh, the sack and appointment of uh, Eric Ten Hag and Amorim. But right now, just uh, to do a 2 in 1 uh, before we wrap it up. Uh, well, the Arsenal man there, that's why I want to actually tease you a bit. There's this uh, a little kid uh, who actually is a fan of uh, Bukayo Saka. I'm sure but maybe you've seen that particular clip. Let's have it briefly, then we'll wrap the show up. Let's have it quickly. Go, go, yeah. Arsenal! <laughs> Scores a goal. I'm gonna say Saka Goon! Goal! Yeah! <laughs> Hello! Saka! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for my present. Is that your hand? I have a present for you. Do you want to see? <gasps> got a hat for you. Do you like hats? Whoa. Do you like hats here? Oh, look at that hat. Thank you. Open it. Should I open? Saka, give me this. Oh, he said Saka, give me this. <gasps> got little cards. Wow. Stick on your top. Oh, no. Where do we stick it here? Right. There. I like it there. Who gave it to you? Saka. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. You're going to say bye-bye. See you later. Oh, God. <laughs> Good one there. I can see you smiling at least. That's a, <laughs> a whole lot for you before we wrap it up. Well, I want to appreciate your time with us. I can see some smile. And the jersey behind yeah. you speaks volume too. Thank you for joining us from London. Any day, any time. Thank you so much for having me. Saka for me is a legend right here in London, even in Arsenal. So many fans, you know, love to watch him play. When you go to the stadium and see how the chant is them, you will just be, you know, the ghost people will just be coming all over. Just the love for Bukayo Saka is just so massive. And again, I want to say thank you so much for having me. I want to see you want to no i can always get to do this as often as any time you want to have me thank you so much okay good one there at least uh, with that particular clip you saw that should be an appetizer to always want to come back <laughs> thank you so much wale ayeni okay back to the studio muhammad ali don't worry i'll bring your own <laughs> i'll bring your own kid uh, maybe you support aimba i can get an aimba small boy to also do that that would be great okay would be good one muhammad ali thanks for coming on the show thank you thank you thank you for having okay me. we've run through some stories for you for this weekend big matches coming up with the mpfl carlo plus plus united not forgetting lobby start against remo stars you have the likes of abia warriors against heartland fc why rangers we host to Nasarawa United, uh, that's about MPFL, and over there in England, big matches coming up, Manchester United versus uh, Chelsea, well, both of them, one said 2-2, two, two, and the other one said Chelsea will win 3-2, we wait to see, maybe, uh, the, the divide actually predict, mostly correct, concerning this, that's it on the show, weekend sport on Trust TV, as I always say, that sport is business and fitness, have a splendid weekend, I'm um, Adeni Aji Shafe. Thanks for watching.